Hello there, thanks for watching Digital Sojourner and for following this Bible teaching video series on 1 Corinthians. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 today. I'm going to read with you from verse number 9 to the end of the chapter. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetousness, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from yourselves, from among yourselves, that wicked person. Trust God would re trust this reading of his word. We've been dealing through this section through different things that are in the passage, sexual sin and discipline, the fact that churches should be pure. And here we come to a section that is going to teach us um, how... The Apostle or the Spirit of God through the Apostle is guiding God's people as to their relationships with people who commit sin that is causing the church to be corrupted and damaging the witness of Jesus Christ in the local church and affecting other believers. But these people to some extent um, were bending and twisting what God was teaching through the Apostle. You'll notice that Paul says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. He's really saying to them, I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with immoral people. Now, I don't know what that letter was, and there's great debate, and it really doesn't help with the argument here, but um, there are many who will debate as to whether that letter was this one, or whether, you know, whether it's a reference to I'm writing to you in this letter. But let's just leave that there. The point is that he had written or he was writing to them to instruct them not to associate themselves with the moral people. But actually, instead of dealing with the sin that had raised its head in the church in Corinth, they were saying, look, we, um, we don't have anything to do with people who are immoral, people who are greedy and covetousness, people who are idolaters, people who are abusive in their language. This is all the stuff in verse 11. People who are a drunkard or an extortioner. Now, Paul says, look, I didn't write to you to say that you shouldn't keep company with people who are not Christians. He's really saying that you, you would have to be removed from this world if you were going to avoid rubbing shoulders with people of this character. Now, it, this is not teaching that a Christian should spend their life in the company of people of a shady background or of sinful habits, but it is saying that we are not so detached from the world, that we do not help, that we do not um, get involved with, that we do not seek to point to the Lord Jesus Christ people from these types of backgrounds for indeed Paul saying it's virtually impossible to mix with anyone because you go down the list and it's talking about greedy people it's talking about abusive people it's talking about people who drink and are drunkards and um, it's talking about extortioners people who rob who steal who swindle uh, Paul saying if you were to avoid having contact with any of those people he says you'd actually have to be taken out of the world it just wouldn't be possible so verse 10 is saying, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. What he's saying there is, I'm not saying the people who are worldly. So here's an, a thing we have to learn from this passage. The world and the church are distinct. The Christian is from a distinct group of people different to the world. He's talking about people of this world. So you're not meant to be like the world. You're meant to be different. But you may rub shoulders and you will rub shoulders with people in the world who are greedy, who are swindlers and cheats, who are idolaters, who have obsessions and desires for things that replace God. So you can't not mix with people like that. But remember, you are distinct. You are separate. You have been called of God to be holy and to be pure. But he's saying, I'm writing to you now and I'm asking you to remember not to keep company with a man that is called a brother, 
Now you'll notice his language there. A man that is called a brother. What he's saying is if a person claims to be a follower of Christ, I'm not discussing at the moment, he says, the reality of their claim. I, I, I cannot see the evidence in their life if they live like this. Their fruits aren't proving they are that, but they name the name of Christ and they claim to be a follower of Christ. He says if someone who names the name of Christ and claims to be a brother is immoral, is covetous in their extreme greed is idolatrous, replacing God with the drives and desires for things that replace God, who's abusive, who's a drunkard, who's an extortion, a swindler, a robber, or a thief. Well, you shouldn't be having social contact with them. This is a principle that runs when a person is disciplined by the church, that person cannot have day-to-day -day social interaction with people in the church. And I'm not saying their family don't have meals with them. I don't believe that that would be taught in the passage. I'm saying that you can't go and visit their home and go out for meals with them and have social, normal social relationships with them because the Bible says, with such an one, no, not even to eat. Now, that's not just the only passage in the Bible that teaches that type of thing. You go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and it talks about men who are corrupt, and men who deny the doctrine of God, who deny the truth concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. They're corrupt men, and he says, from such withdraw. Distance yourself from people like that. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6, the Spirit of God talks about people who are unruly, they're, in, they're not disciplined, they live their life in a way that is absolutely out of keeping with, with a follower of Christ, their lives are disorderly, they're not submitting to the authority of Scripture, they're not submitting to the authority of elders, they refuse to obey the Word of God, and in Second Thessalonians 3 verse 6, the Apostle says, withdraw yourselves from people like that. So here's a principle. A person who sins is put out of the church. A person who is living out of keeping with the things of God, but maybe not committing these things, that they would be put out of fellowship, we have to distance herself from them. Now that's not the elder. The elder is still to care for them, to shepherd them, to, 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 to care for them and to seek to bring them back. But the average everyday Christian in fellowship has to withdraw themselves or he has to distance themselves not to keep company with those who are out of fellowship or those who are out of walk, out of keep with God. They've not, it's not an appropriate thing for you to keep company with people who would Turn you away from God and turn you away from the things of God. You have to be careful about that. It's a very... But remember the earlier part of the passage, you say a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. This wicked behaviour, wicked belief, um, sinful habits will drag a person away. It will infect the church, it will infect the individual. Now Paul goes on then to say in verse number 12, What am I doing then judging them that are without um, what he's saying here is there's a responsibility for the church and the elders in a church to apply discipline for those who are within the church fellowship. So here is a very clear principle. There is a within to the church fellowship. There is a without. Every Christian is not in fellowship in every church. Uh, people who are in the fellowship of the church, they're saved, baptised, they're added to the church, they are under the discipline and the authority and the governmental control of elders as God has designed in his word, and therefore there are decisions that are made that ref relate to them. Paul is saying, we don't judge those that are out in the world, those who are not in fellowship in a local church. God judges them, verse 13 says. But the responsibility of elders is to make decisions, to pass judgment, and to care for the, the, the spiritual welfare of the individual and the purity of the church. So he says, I'm not here to judge those who are without, but you have to make decisions about those who are within the church fellowship. And he ends the passage by saying, therefore put away from among you that wicked person. The ultimate in this section is, these people were flaunting their liberality and claiming to be so kind, but they were reflecting the fact that they were not obeying the word of God and denying the fact that the church is holy. And God says, put that person away from fellowship. Some big lessons in there for us to learn this week. And I trust that God will help us with it. That by prayer and by obedience to the word of God, we might seek to put into practice the truths that we're gleaning from these passages. Thank you once again for watching.